Doing some modifications to the sending unit. Um, I already installed a dash six fitting on the uh, supply line, uh, so it was a basically a direct bolt on. Now I'm working on the return line, which originally was set up as a quarter inch and so they choked it down and what I did is I cut it back to where they throttled it down to quarter inch and um, it's essentially a 5 16 hard line here uh, just like the the vent uh, tube here so I've got this uh, compression fitting that uh, I'm going to try to make work on here and uh, that way I can get a dash six on that as well and on the uh, vent I'm just gonna do it old school with a uh, hose clamp and you know rubber line but uh, I'll uh, pressure test this to see if it actually seals if not um, I'm gonna go a different route okay a little closer look at this uh, compression fitting so this is collar that goes on after you put this sleeve on and a uh, 5 16 bit will pass through there no problem as you can see but it wouldn't go over the 5 16 return line so what I did is took the next one up and you can see that it will not go through so I went ahead and drilled that out and then uh, <clears throat> used my Dremel over there with a uh, sanding drum that would fit in there and just kind of cleaned it up the best I could and then threaded it on there like I said I uh, put a little compressed air on it and I didn't hear anything leaking but uh, I'll test it properly later All right, got to looking at this uh, connection on this fuel sending unit. And it's got some slots on either side of these connectors. And then the kit that I have has a provision for slots only on one side. So because one of these is the actual uh, sending unit connection uh, that goes to the fuel gauge. Uh, I'm going to do a separate connection on that and do one of these uh, singles out of this kit. One of the uh, weather pack connections I guess they call it. And then I'll do a connector for the power to the fuel pump and the ground as a two prong and that way I can run a wire from that to chassis ground back where the original uh, ground connection is for the uh, original sending unit and uh, then I'll have to tap into the uh, wire harness that Holly provides for the uh, fuel pump relay and uh, do a plug for that with the gray wire here which is supposedly the power connection that goes to the wall rope pump which also has its own little uh, pigtail that goes on there that I still need to do but just trying to think this out before I get too crazy and I think that's probably the best uh, solution is to make two separate uh, plugs for this uh, sending unit. Okay I got these plugs switched out uh, with the original and uh, use this cool little tool that comes with the kit that will basically go around the pin inside there. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. And uh, what it does is it compresses these little uh, tangs on the side so you can actually push it out of the, uh, the socket. So all I did was uh, push it back in and then 
these things just snap over and lock it in place. So those are, I guess you'd call them the male ends, depending on how you look at it. Um, here's the other side of it, so I guess this would be, yeah, maybe this is the male where it has the pins come out. Anyways, so then I'll be able to lock in my wires, one, uh, the uh, power line or power wire going to um, the relay, or actually coming from the relay, and I'll connect it with this weather pack uh, connection here along with the ground, and then this one will be the actual uh, sending unit signal going to the gas gauge. So I'll crimp one of these ends on the uh, wire that's existing um, back there above the uh, fuel tank and uh, get that connected. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to connect the electric fuel pump. Um, this is the uh, power wire coming from the fuel pump relay, which uh, will connect with this harness here. And I noticed that this is like, a, I'm guessing maybe like a 12 gauge wire. And then the Walbro pump came with this pigtail that has, a, I'm guessing like a 14 gauge or maybe 16 gauge. It's definitely smaller in diameter than this. So what I want to do is see if I can make this work inside here. If not, I've got some uh, connections that will clip in like this. So I'm going to pop this guy out. So they got these little tangs on here, which need to bend back out once uh, you reinstall them. Like this won't be used on this particular setup, but make sure they're popped out like that and then you slip them back in and, and connect them. But on this, I'm going to see if this fitting has that tang on the back, and I'm guessing it probably doesn't. But uh, we'll find out here real quick. Take off this uh, heat shrink wrap, and it does not, so I'm going to have to crimp a new fitting on there. And uh, I'll be able to determine if uh, this gauge wire is actually thicker than what the uh, Walbro pump came with as far as that pigtail. This is kind of a different size altogether. So I'm going to uh, crimp on a new fitting and see if I can get it to uh, fit into here and then I'll have a uh, correct uh, plug for this pump. I've got these that I think will work. Not exactly the same, but similar. I can test that I guess by Snapping that in place. Let's see if I've got something a little bit different. Yeah, I think all the connections I have are identical to to these. So we're going to give it a whirl and see what happens. So what I want to do here is uh, basically get my length in the ballpark. I think I'm going to snip it there. And I'll have a little extra and then uh, do the same thing with the ground. Um, the ground has this here that I'm pretty sure is the same as the uh, power that didn't have. Let's see if I can get this off without damaging myself. This is the same. It does not have that tang on it so I'm going to have to eliminate that. I don't have a lot of slack here on this one so I may have to add a little to that. Okay, just snipped this off about the length that I wanted it. 
Now I'm just going to strip it and kind of compare. Definitely a little bit thicker wire, although it's not copper, but I think I can work with that. So I'll put a little bit of heat shrink tube on here. Make it all professional like. And then we'll try to crimp this the best we can. So I like to get them started kind of bent in the direction I want them to go. So I kind of like that. back in there to make sure we have it like we want it okay make sure that's nice and snug and then we'll do the same with the bigger one for the insulation try to get that kind of bent in the proper direction so kind of get that started and then kind of like these to kind of drive it down in the middle that way it's got a nice tight fit on that okay that should hold good and then what I'll do is get the heat gun out shrink that up and then do the same with this guy and I'm not sure if I'm going to have to add some wire to it or not but I have to pop this guy out actually what I want to do first so I don't get these mixed up is I'm going to get this one situated and then I'll pop this one out and work that one in alright get that kind of where I want it Just a little added insurance. I'm sure it doesn't make that big of a deal when it's in the gas tank, but anyways, that hopefully will fit in there. Yep, just heard it click. You can see that. So now I gotta pop this guy out. These are a little tricky. That popped out. And then we'll figure out how this is going to fit with that short ground wire. Just making sure I've got the right width here. This seems like it's a little bit narrower. I might have to widen that out a little bit. All right. This has got kind of a fat edge to it. So what I did is I kind of squeezed that in on the uh, other one and it finally went into the uh, socket so, so like I said it's a little bit different design so we're just going to kind of be preemptive here and get that knocked out so this other one got to figure out what I'm going to do here because like I said it's pretty short Got the heat shrink off of there, and so I got to get another fitting on there. I might, might have enough length there. So what I'll do is I'll probably cut it right there, get as much length out of this as I can. My stripper will uh, give me a nice clean deal here so I can put that on. And like I said, I'm sure this is totally unnecessary, but I'm going to use a little bit of heat shrink on this one too. And then get this kind of bent over, get it started. Make 
make sure that's a nice snug fit. And then we'll do the same for the uh, insulation part of it. Get that started. That feels pretty snug, but I'll uh, hit it with this as well. See if I can get it to dig in there. So that kind of digs into the insulation. And we'll put this heat shrink on. And then hopefully this will fit in here just like that. So what I want to do is pop this back out. This being a little bit difficult to get out. There we go. This one fits in here. Make sure I got it going the right direction. I just heard it click. And then let's see if it'll go in without too much trouble. I'm going to have to persuade this like the other one. There's the guy I'm looking for. See if that helps. There we go. Okay. So I think that'll do on that. So I probably ought to check continuity on that to see. So I'll turn my meter multimeter on. see what we got here so that is our plug for the gray wire here and I think because of my, my heat shrink I'm not going to be able to back probe it so we'll just pop this thing out again now that we've got it fit in there the way we want Let's see what we got here so that's our gray wire so we got a good connection there and then our ground is right here and ground here so we got a good connection there so technically when we have a uh, signal coming from the fuel pump relay we should have an active fuel pump so what I'm going to do is cinch all this stuff up, probably put some uh, tie wraps on here and uh, secure everything so nothing comes loose when it's in the uh, gas tank because that would be a pain in the ass to have to go in after the fact and uh, fix that. What I want to do is put one around the pump just so it doesn't wander off probably put one around this rat's nest up here just so wires don't get in the way of anything in the tank which I'm sure everything will be fine okay last thing is the fuel sock and I think you can put that on in pretty much any direction, but I think most of them I've seen face towards the front. That should be it. We've got our Dash 6 uh, fittings here for the supply, the return, um, and the vent. We've got our plug switched over. This one is for the sending unit signal to the uh, gas gauge and this is our power and our ground for uh, the fuel pump itself 
so we should be able to drop this in once that uh, old tank is pulled out we put the new tank in and uh, put the fuel sock or the fuel pickup sock on there and then once I get the sending unit uh, or the uh, gas gauge signal wire connected I can test the uh, full motion of this float here to see if it actually corresponds correctly on the gas gauge so we'll do that uh, once we get the tank installed and before we fill it up and connect everything we'll just have it hanging out the side and then manually move this and watch the gas gauge and once that's all verified we'll uh, button up the gas tank and then work on our hard lines coming back up towards the front which we have to add one for the return line since my uh, El Camino didn't come with one and then obviously the vent line is already there so we'll just uh, do old school on that and use a uh, hose clamp on the existing uh, rubber line since that's not a pressurized line and that goes to this uh, I'm guessing it's a check valve of some sort anyways uh, I think that is a wrap on this uh, sending unit just got done adding this uh, weather pack connector for the uh, float uh, level signal going up to the gas gauge so what I did is I uh, cut the original harness and then uh, that's the end of it that plugs into the uh, main harness by the uh, tail lights and uh, so basically it's an adapter um, gave myself a little bit of length so um, when I drop the tank in the future I'll have that uh, extra slack doing a comparison between the two tanks here and uh, there's a couple of uh, small differences between the two um, externally you can see the filler necks are a little bit different shape and uh, the end is in a different position on the new one so that might need to be tweaked uh, the corners are not bent in as far on the new tank versus uh, the old tank so that might uh, create some fitment issues um, but otherwise the uh, outside of the tank looks virtually identical from uh, one to the other uh, the big difference is the the FI tank has that sump pan at the bottom um, where the uh, fuel pump will sit in and uh, I guess that keeps fuel around it um, while you're cornering and stopping and starting whereas the original tank has nothing down there. I don't know if you can see that. And then of course the side baffle. Um, I guess that directs where the fuel comes in from the fuel fuel neck. And both tanks have that. Uh, the other main difference obviously are the sending units. Um, You can see that these are significantly different. Um, the original one that came out of the old tank just has the, the pickup tube and the uh, float. And the vent is at the top there. So you only have the two lines coming out. And then the connection for the uh, fuel level going to the uh, gas gauge. And uh, they have about the same depth, but they are considerably different. The new one obviously has provision for the fuel pump to be attached. It's got three lines. Uh, the float and the arm are in a different position. Uh, the fuel sock um, is different, obviously, because it's got to be connected to the fuel pump. And then the electrical, there's three wires. Uh, one of them is the uh, float uh, level uh, signal. And then the gray wire is the power for 
the fuel pump and then the black with white stripe wire is the ground for the uh, float level and the fuel pump. Other than that, uh, we had to make some modifications to the bottom bracket for the fuel pump. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I had to cut about half of it off so we could move the pump up a little bit so we could get the right depth inside the tank without it hitting the side wall of that sump area in there. And now we got it to fit uh, the way it should. So definitely not a bolt-in upgrade on any of this stuff. A lot of modifications, and I'm sure there's going to be more to come once we get to running fuel lines and uh, do all the wiring underneath the hood. Okay, doing a little quick test to see if the fuel pump uh, will work before I install it. Just got a ground and a 12 volt connection here at my plug. Come on. And as you can hear, it does work. So I don't have to worry about whether I've got a bad pump right off the get-go. Okay, what I've done here is temporarily connected the sending unit with the uh, signal wire and the ground. And right now I've got it set at about halfway. The float's about halfway. And it looks like we're a little bit above half, so it's a little bit off. The calibration is not perfect, but let's see what this looks like. Let's see if I get it to stay where I want it. I'm going to say that's a little less than half, maybe close to a quarter tank. So yeah, the calibration is kind of out from a half tank to a quarter tank. But uh, let's see if empty is actually empty. Okay, that's pegged against the bottom there. So let's see what we got. So empty is close to empty actually shows a little bit on the, the gauge so I'll have to keep that in mind if I'm doing any kind of road trips in this thing but uh, the only thing else I've got to test on the sending unit is uh, for uh, pressure leaks when I put some compressed air on the supply line and the uh, return line mm -hmm. 